If you're new to the project, a big warm welcome. If you're a tough old root, then welcome back. Today is all about solar and just how stupid easy it can be. You're watching Steep in the Woods. I'm Josh. I'm Celia. And this is our daughter, Ivy. Here at Steep in the Woods, we are 100% off grid. We live on a 14 acre mountain top homestead nestled deep in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. Here on Steep in the Woods, we do totally off-grid on a shoestring budget. You'll see no fancy stuff here. It's just making do with what you have and what you can figure out. Obviously, the first step in any solar setup is the panels themselves. Now, this can be as simple as one single panel sitting on top of a 2x4. To anything as complicated and awesome as our DIY movable one here for the house. This one powers our house, and this one here was our original solar panel uh, uh, setup from our first attempt to go off grid. And it will be powering the Smithy. What you need to do is set them up facing south. This one obviously can move, but that is not required. If you have it facing south, it'll be good enough. The other thing you need to be aware of is that the pitch of the sun will change. So in the winter, you want these real steep facing south. In the summer, you want them almost flat. So as long as you factor in some way to adjust them backwards, whether with these posts here that I'll just pull backwards and shorten to change the pitch of our smithy uh, solar setup here, or something like this one, which I'll just take a winch cable and just yank it back. Either way, you want to get your solar panels set up. You want them to have plenty of sun sunlight, and you want them to be facing south. The next thing you have to figure out is whether you want to run your, your panels parallel or in sequence. I always choose in parallel. That's where you wire all the positives to all of the negatives. That increases your amperage but leaves the voltage the same. Were you to line these up in sequence, you would go positive, negative, positive, negative, which would then increase the voltage and leave the amperage alone. The problem with uh, in series is that were there to be a leaf or a shadow on one of your panels, it kills the entire system until that uh, spot of shade is removed kind of like Christmas lights. If one of the lights goes out, the entire string dies. So why would you ever do that? Well, the one time that it would be worthwhile to do in sequence is if you have a large amount of run. If your panels have to travel a long distance to get to wherever your charge can uh, troller and your battery is, then doing them in series will allow you to use a much thinner wire because it's not carrying nearly as many amps. So these will be wired up in parallel. I'd always do that one. Um, I'd rather buy a little bit thicker wire and have a more foolproof system than to skimp out on the wire and have a system that, that, that really is just full of flaws. Which brings us to our next step. You're gonna need some kind of wire. This is outdoor rated wire. Um, I would strongly suggest that you go with that. This is some thinner wire because these panels are older. They do not have the amperage that a newer panel will. If you're gonna use a newer panel, like we did with our house setup, you're gonna want a thicker wire. We were lucky enough to find a, a big spool of well wire, really thick, thick wire to run all of our other solar panel setups with. So all you have to do is take your wire that you're going to be carrying that electricity from your, from your sun to your power spot is just wire all the positives to the positives, all the negatives to the negatives, and remember which one is which.
Now that you got all of your panels wired together in parallel and covered that mess with a whole bunch of electrical tape, you take your lead wire here and run it wherever it is you're uh, heading with it. For us, we're going towards the smithy with this wire here, and that'll be where we do all of our charging, and uh, that's where our battery will uh, be, and that's where we just generally need this power. Now that you have your line ran from your solar panel to wherever it is you happen to need that power, could be your house, could be your workshop, in our case it's the Steep in the Woods Smithy, uh, there's just a few more steps left. This truly is one of the easiest processes in the whole world. The things that you are going to need is a charge controller. This is where the line from your solar panel goes to. It goes to one of these. These are really cheap. You can have them for as little as $10. Uh, and they really are foolproof. They come set with all the different uh, uh, settings that you would need. Uh, and they have labels here. Got a picture of a uh, panel with a plus and a minus. You got a picture of a battery with a plus and a minus. I got a picture of a light bulb with a plus and a minus. And uh, really, you just attach your solar panel where the picture is, the battery where the picture the picture is, and then whatever you happen to be running, where the light bulb is. And it, I would encourage you to go with a charge controller like this. It doesn't have to be this one in particular, but one in which your draw, in which your light bulb, you know, whatever you happen to be using this for, goes through the charge controller. I would not recommend hooking anything up to your battery itself. This will automatically... Uh, cut power to what it, whatever it is you're using when your battery voltage drops too low. You do not want that to happen. That will permanently damage your battery. Speaking of the battery, I just have a little Mighty Max here. Uh, it's had off of Amazon. I believe a man named Willem sent me this one. And, uh, you know, it's not the biggest battery in the whole world. And it may not be the best deal. Shipping is high on something as heavy as a battery. But I have had zero complaints with this one. It seems very well, well made. Uh, it is a gel battery, a sealed maintenance-free battery, uh, which is a more convenient battery to get. For the house, we have deep cycle batteries, and we have three of them. And those will take some maintenance over time. This one, however, will not. The last thing that I use that you do not have to, I was always told as a kid, and I don't know if it's true, that if you set a battery on the ground over time, it will discharge itself. Uh, that may be false. It may not. I always use a little piece of foam. It doesn't have to be this particular type. It could be rubber, you know, an old welcome mat, just, just what have you. And I will set the battery on top of this. Just in case there's any uh, a, a truth to what I was told, I've taken a step to avoid it. So I just put mine on the shelf by the workbench. You'll get more out of your battery and more out of your system if it's in a climate-controlled environment. Um, I don't think it makes or breaks the uh, system. I mean, obviously cars, their batteries are out in the weather all the time. And, uh, hey, it always starts when I go to do it. Well, most of the time. <laughs> but either way, that's basically it. Now you just run a wire from the uh, terminal with the light bulb to whatever it is you're trying to power. Uh, I installed this not only to run some lights so I can work at night, but also to run the blower on my new forge. I'm very, very excited. Um, you know, a lot of people really stress out about how to turn 12 volt into 120. And if you just wanna make a system work to your house as your house stands, it can be complicated. But 
in this day and age, you can find everything you want in 12 volts. So we just went that route. It's easier for us since we started from scratch and had to buy all our, all our appliances you know, from the beginning, but you can run and do pretty much everything you would ever want to using only 12 volt if you're willing to purchase the 12 volt appliances. If you liked what you saw, hit that button. If you're new to the project, hit that other button. You want to help support the project? There are links below. Until next time here, Steve in the Woods.